Today, we're going to be taking a look at Illumina, and this is in the context of checking in. So when we invest in tech stocks, there's really three basic rules that we use. First, we try to find a leader in a high growth niche, in this case, uh, genetic sequencing hardware and consumables. Uh, we want to find a niche that has a large TAM, and Illumina argues their total addressable market is somewhere in the range of $120 billion. We'll look at that in a bit. And of course, Illumina is the leader. They have about an 80% market share in genetic sequencing tools. Once we've identified a leader and we accumulate a position using dollar cost averaging, we'll then check in about once a year. We find that to be a sufficient cadence and with the exception of strong price movements or potentially M&A events, checking in once a year usually eliminates all that quarterly noise. So as we check in, of course, the only reason that we'll exit a position, there are two reasons. The first is if our thesis changes, and the second would be if growth stalls. And of course, stalling growth can sometimes be difficult to gauge. And when it comes to Illumina, they're actually our second largest holding by weighting in our 36 tech stock portfolio. And there's three things we've been paying attention to. The first is the Grail acquisition. The second is their long read sequencing offering, which they've put together an attempt to thwart uh, competitors like PacBio and um, Oxford Nanopore. And of course, stalling growth. Last quarter, Illumina seemed to face the same macroeconomic headwinds that all other firms are facing. Now, when we look at share price performance over the last decade, Illumina has performed about the same as the QQQ NASDAQ tracker index. But when you look at uh, over the past seven years, shares are actually trading under what they did seven years ago. And that was a point in time when they actually had half, let's say less than half the revenues that they do now. So you could argue that uh, Illumina is trading at a pretty decent valuation. It's a simple valuation ratio of about seven. Now, since the beginning of this year, shares have fallen about 50%. That's compared to uh, a NASDAQ decline of 27%. Actually, that's uh, over the past rolling year. And as we said, uh, you're now able to purchase shares for less than what they were trading at seven years ago. And when you look at this quarterly revenue growth chart, something stands out. That would be the second quarter of 2020 when the RONA impacted their revenues quite significantly. That was attributed to prolonged closures or reduced operations at research labs. So that's important to pay attention to. We certainly wouldn't expect something that significant in a bear market, but certainly when companies start to tighten their purse strings and it becomes more difficult to get signatures, we can expect Illumina's growth to slow. And we see in the last quarter, that's what has happened. And they say here that fiscal year 23, which is actually 2022, uh, they expect that to be uh, slightly moderated given the challenging macroeconomic environment. And what that means is they're expecting 4 to 5% growth in revenues for 2022 over 2021. So that's certainly nothing um, that great, but all firms seem to be facing the same headwinds. Now, what's quite concerning about Illumina that uh, when we last wrote about them, we covered this topic extensively, and I'll put a link to that research piece in the description of this video, but uh, it was resulting, uh, it was regarding Grail, and Grail was originally formed by Illumina in 2015, and then in 2017, Illumina reduced their ownership of Grail uh, to below 20% of voting interest, and then Grail announced an IPO. Illumina purchased the remaining outstanding shares, therefore acquiring Grail, and this transaction was met with a great deal of concern from regulators who said that Illumina shouldn't go through with the deal. For whatever reason, they decided to. Now, Grail is involved in um, basically cancer blood testing, and that was the topic of our last piece. And what's concerning here is that Illumina has wasted a great deal of time, energy, resources, and money trying to acquire Grail when that acquisition is not going to go through. So recently, the European Commission uh, predictably ruled against that acquisition, and now Illumina is seeking alternatives for Grail. So 
Uh, it's hard to say what that might be. A JP Morgan analyst had commented that uh, they're waiting for this separate order from the EC that will require them to divest Grail, and which they expect to receive by the end of this year or early next year. And that would also come with a time frame, perhaps six to 18 months, uh, under which Illumina would need to divest Grail. So essentially, they acquired something that now they're potentially going to have to divest at less than what they acquired it for. There are also penalties. You can see here that Illumina last quarter recognized $609 million in legal contingencies for the potential fine they might face from the EC imposed on up to 10% of their annual revenues. So this is just um, part of Illumina's poor M&A track record. So they've uh, gone back and forth with Grail, and now they're potentially going to divest it at a loss. Who knows how much effort was put into that from the senior management team. They failed at acquiring Pacific Biosciences. That was their answer to long read. And then what's the plan now for acquisitive growth? Who knows? But when it comes to long read, uh, we know a bit more information about that. So that was previously referred to as infinity. They now call it complete long reads. They use the acronym CLR. Well, this was once used by PacBio, their competitor in long reads for PacBio's continuous long reads technology that was error prone and replaced by their hi-fi sequencing reads. And PacBio actually put out a blog piece that's quite interesting. Uh, in the research piece that accompanies this, we'll provide a link to that, but they talk about how Illumina's technology, this was written just last month, exhibits the same problems as it did nine months ago when they wrote about how synthetic long reads, that's what Illumina is doing, did not compare to the benefits of true long reads. And they go on to say that Illumina is producing marketing material that is misleading and incorrect. And it's hard to believe that a $32 billion company would uh, blatantly do that, but um, PacBio didn't have many kind words to say about Illumina's long read technology. And when you look at this chart they produced, it shows the accuracy of Illumina's long reads versus PacBio Hi-Fi. And the question here really concerns, you know, use cases and how important accuracy is. And we just don't know enough. So uh, the ultimate judge of whether or not Illumina's technology is uh, sufficiently able to compete with Oxford and PacBio is, of course, the life sciences community. So Illumina plans to launch two full end-to-end -end workflows next year. And I guess that's probably the soonest uh, we'll know whether or not what they've developed is actually going to be competitive. Now, getting back to that total addressable market, Illumina um, cites this $120 billion TAM and that they've penetrated a very small amount of that. And here you can see their estimates for market penetration going forward. So there's certainly a lot of growth still left for Illumina. And there's a concern here around their consistently bad decisions that have been made with Grail. But of course, we need to wait for the dust to settle here. It seems like the market has already priced that in. Hopefully now Illumina will provide us color on what sort of acquisitive growth plans they have. But provided those uh, TAM numbers are remotely accurate, it certainly seems like Illumina is a compelling growth story. And this probably represents a good opportunity for investors to climb on board because there seems to be a lot of uh, growth left in their pipeline. So please put your comments in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. And thanks for taking the time to watch this today.